Hi, today I'm going to talk about a common problem that can occur when you calibrate a material model. In my example, I'm going to analyze some experimental data that I have for CPVC, chlorinated PVC, and I'm going to calibrate the material model to this data. I'm going to examine the predictions in uh, ANSYS to the actual value of a real problem that I'm trying to solve. I'm going to demonstrate what can occur if you don't think it through carefully in the beginning. So, so here's the problem. I have experimental data. There are two different tension strain rates. One of them is loading and unloading, and one is just monotonic. And then I have a test that was 10 times slower in green here. I already calibrated a material model to this data. And when I calibrated it, I added a, in M calibration, a Poisson's ratio value that I want to target. So I don't have to specify the bulk modulus or in ANSYS the D parameter, which is a, a, the, the one over the bulk modulus or something like that. So here's the calibration results. Uh, I'm going to run this once. And um, this is the ANSYS Bergstrom Boys model. And I've talked about this in the past. It's not always the best material model for thermoplastic material, but it's a suitable material model for this demonstration. So then the key here is the dashed lines are the predictions from this uh, Bergstrom Boys material model. It's a viscoplastic material model. And the, the error here, the average error of the predictions is 13%, which is not so bad. I mean, I often try to aim for about 10% errors in my finite element simulations. So here it is, a calibration. We have uh, loading and unloading, multiple strain rates. We get an error of 13%. All right, so I then I export this material model to ANSYS APDL format. I'm going to plug it into ANSYS in the material simulation that I want to perform. So I've already done that, so let's open ANSYS. So here's my ANSYS test that I actually ran an experiment on the same CPVC material. It's a strip of the material with a hole in the middle, and I'm pulling this in tension here. I'm basically pulling it out a bit, and I want to predict the maximum force it takes to pull it a, a distance, in this case, of two, uh, one millimeter. Uh, and this is a 100 millimeter long strip. Uh, the material mold I plugged in here under solids, uh, geometry, solid commands, and here's the material definition that I got from M calibration that specifies the material mold. And uh, what, what I do after that, I just apply my boundary conditions, so I keep the fixed left, and I'm pulling on the right. And if I perform the simulation, you can look at stresses and strains. But I was focusing here on the force because I have measured the force experimentally. My simulation gives me a force of 109.4 newtons. And the actual value here is when I ran this experiment with 212 newtons. So the prediction is absolutely terrible. We got predicted 100 newtons and there should be 200 newtons. Clearly, this is not a 13% error that we saw back in M calibration. So this is the dilemma that I wanted to focus on in this video. The error that can be much larger in the end than what you think from this error here. So what is the problem? What did we do wrong here? Clearly, the problem, as you think about it, is that, yeah, this model matches the data overall pretty well, about 13% error, but it doesn't predict the initial Young's modulus very well. So if I zoom in here, um, I was dragging a little rectangle, we'll see that there, look at the predictions here in dashed lines, they're way below. It's a factor about two compared to what it should be. And uh, that is really the problem. And why did the calibration pick such a bad Young's modulus? Well, the calibration did that because it, it wanted to capture the unloading response and the loading response and this large strain response all at once. And this material model can't do all of that. So it fits the model in a somewhat of average sense. And in this case, it ended up with a really poor prediction of the Young's modulus, which then ended up being a big problem in the finite element simulation because that was mainly small strains. So what should we have done instead? Well, we should have I added another load case to it here. And uh, I would do a, a Young's modulus. I would specify what the Young's modulus should be. And then I would use that as another target of my calibration. So I already did that too. So let me open that file. 
So here's my added file that contains uh, the Young's modulus target here. If I run this one time, we see that the overall fitness is actually not very good. It matches the Young's modulus exactly, which is what we wanted, but the overall fitness is now 22% and not 13%. So it looks like a worse fit, but it does match the initial Young's modulus better. So the idea here is that you want to make sure to match the parts of the stress strain curve that really matter for what you're trying to do and not just an uh, average sense match. And in this case, if I use this simulation here, I use this material model and I plug it into ANSYS, let me open my ANSYS simulation for that. So here is my uh, simulation file in, in ANSYS where I use this other material model with a different initial stiffness to match the actual stiffness, even though we compromised other things. If I run this simulation, I get a slightly different response, obviously, but when I look at the actual force that's predicted here, I get 234 newtons, and the actual value should be 212. So this is a significantly better prediction error. It's about 10%, not double, half of what it should be. It's a huge improvement by doing that. And so, so what did we learn here? The key lesson is that when you calibrate the material model, don't forget the Young's modulus. Don't forget to make sure that you have a good prediction of the Young's modulus too. And you can do that in M calibration by adding a load case for the Young's modulus. And often I add one load case for the Poisson's ratio as well. But the Young's modulus is something that people don't always remember to keep track of. And then you can have very poor predictions as I showed here. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.